That's why we test things. Thank you. Good. Ha ha. Yes, the thing I, I uh, the joke that I said is that uh, my piano is way too out of tune. Um. Cool. Okie dokie. Cool. All right. So, um, I should mute myself because that's very distracting. Um, <laughs> the cat's not here at the moment. So, um, there we go. So, um, Hi, everybody. Welcome. Today, we're going to talk about a bunch of stuff related to getting on with the course, etc. However, there are some uh, bookkeeping, house cleaning items that we need to talk about prior to, um, prior to getting on with the stream. So, with respect to the announcements that I made um, over the uh, on Friday the turns out that uh, I had not set up sufficient amounts of protection on the channel to prevent um, some nasty degrees of um, trolling that was happening and I just want you guys to know that we are now taking active countermeasures. Um, let me just bring this up on my phone, because that's always a thing I do. <laughs> oh wait, yeah, I can't, because it's on listed video. Gosh darn it. All right. So. So, uh... Essentially, the way that I have, the way that I am thinking about it currently is this. If you imagine the streams as being like a body, like a human body, then you can think of these trolls as being infections in that body. They're nasty, and, you know, we have the power. I could send myself the link, that's true. Um, I... You ha like basically there are two ways that the body protect protects against infections, right? There's the envelope of the skin that prevents pathogens from entering. I'm imagining the conversion of this video to an unlisted video to be similar to putting a skin around our bloodstream. Uh, <laughs> live stream bloodstream there we go um, and so that's one a angle you'll notice that I've posted the links for this week coming up it's a little more work on my part but I think it's justified um, then um, the the second angle is I want I want to introduce into the bloodstream something similar to uh, uh, antibodies or killer T cells. So, yeah, exactly. Um, the idea is that by having a few of you guys appointed as moderators, you guys can, you know, the moderators can do the work that I have been um, for, uh, previously forced to do, which is kind of, you know, it's difficult for me to be able to stay on top of moderating the chat and actually doing the thing that I'm here to do at the same time, you know, which is teach you guys how to do stuff. Um, so, with respect to the uh, ability of the chat to police itself, uh, we have a few mods who have been appointed for this stream. I think we probably have enough uh, three is probably enough. 
Um, so, um, if anybody who is currently a mod doesn't want to be a mod anymore, then please, you know, let me know and I'll, I'll demote you and promote someone else, I guess. But, yeah. Yeah, so once the, once the videos have been recorded, I will upload them as public videos. It's just, uh, I'm not even necessarily concerned about chatting that, or trolling that goes on in the comments. All I'm really interested is keeping the live chat relatively clean because people actually use that as an interactive learning device. So, there you go. So, mods, uh, this, this is, these are your instructions as white blood cells in our bloodstream livestream. Um, <clears throat> use your best judgment, right? You know when people are trolling and when they're not. Normally, if somebody's posting uh, successive uh, messages that are unrelated, i.e. spamming, spamming, um, that's an offense. Uh, if you see anybody, especially if somebody is starting to say anything abusive or, you know, being nasty to anybody else in the chat, there you go. Um, no, there are no TAs in the lecture, so far as I'm aware. Um, <clears throat> that's also bannable. So just you know, I'm relying on you to keep to keep the the, the bloodstream live stream uh, free of infection. Yes. So. <clears throat> yeah. Um, and and you know, there is. I, I hope that you guys, like, we all know the difference between someone who is spamming and someone who's actually, you know, having legit questions, right? But, uh, yeah, anyway. <clears throat> so that's that's the situation with that. Um, I'm hoping that these measures are sufficient to keep the trolls down. Um... This was not such, this was not an issue in this live stream. I should I should uh, specify this was an issue that happened in my other live stream for the second year class that I'm teaching, and I am, you know. I imagine that if if they've hit one video on my channel, they'll probably be inclined to hit more of them, just because it's uh, I don't know. This is how they get their kicks. So, yeah. Um, it's not wise to implement these measures on one half of my videos and not the other. Let's put it that way. So yeah, um, hopefully, now that we are a slightly more insulated community, uh, we will not have the same types of issues that we had last week. Um, yep, generally speaking. Ah, um... So, we are still on lecture notes number one. Uh, we will probably be moving to lecture note. I think we got two more days left in it, and then we'll be on to topic two. I'll try to motor because, you know, we need to uh, we need to pick up the pace for you guys to have enough background to be able to do the um, the assignments, etc. Although, assignment one is pretty lightweight. You should be able to figure out that one out without even having seen any lectures, as long as you've done basic math. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. Um, boop -a -doop -a -doop. Cool. So, the one... The, the reason that this would be uh, not working, these measures that have been leveled against the, the the stream is if in fact the troll or trolls i think it was like one or two people even though it was like five or six accounts that was doing it um <clears throat> if the troll or trolls are actually in the class then posting the link on avenue won't actually um do anything but uh yeah and okay and that's the second point is to talk about the assignments so the assignments are not, um, I'm going to, uh, people are having difficulty downloading the assignments. I'm going to take a look at that today and see what's up. Probably just something to be fixed on Jupiter. Um, and yeah, the assignments are also supposed to be uploaded to, uh, Avenue as well. 
So, and I'll get Anna to get on that quite quickly. Um, I'm not sure what the problem is with that, because I haven't looked at it yet. It's still pretty early in the morning. Uh, but by the end of the today, I will be... Grab their IPs. I'm not sure that I would be able to do that. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I'll, ta I'll, I'll take a look at it, and we'll figure out getting the assignment thing working. It's, you know... We always have these kinds of startup issues. Should you read the textbook before the lectures? Ah, uh, uh, maybe not. <laughs> you can if you if you want to deepen your knowledge. So, anyway, what are you doing here? Get out of here. All right. So, with that, let's get to our actual lecture for today. Mm -hmm. Oh, I suppose I could just whitelist my other account. I think that makes you able to just see the chat all the time. Hmm. How about we do this? Something like that. And then... Really? That's a long time to download a frickin'... All right. Oh, why do I even now need to download it? I have it local. Well, good God. All right. Let me see what slide we were on anyway. <laughs> Did the stamp one? <laughs> I think this is where we were. Slide sixteen. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, don't worry about Jupiter. We'll get we'll get Jupiter up and working. I'll post an announcement once we've once we've got Jupiter up and running, guys. So don't worry about it. Boom, boom, boom. No, no, no. Is it here? Yeah. Fit page. There we go. There we go. All right. Okay. So. <clears throat> 16. No. I just gave away the answer. I'm sorry. Okay. So. Last time we were talking about the what an algorithm is, how to define what it is that you're writing when you're writing a computer program, because all computer programs are algorithms. So, we had this example of the function that, uh, the algorithm that finds the x-intersect of a monotonically increasing function on some interval a to b. Yes, um, just, yeah, about the assignment, just chill, we'll get it, we'll get it sorted, okay? So, with respect to this, there's a, with respect to the x-intersect function, there's a question that we might ask ourselves. Given that we have this concept of epsilon, and and given that this algorithm will always only give us a range around which, or inside of which, the x-intersect might exist, is it possible to compute the exact x-intersect by taking epsilon is, as e, is equal to zero? Um, normally, I would quiz you guys on this, but since I've already revealed the answer several times, the answer is no. If a and b are rational and the x-intersect is irrational, then it will never be reached. So the idea is, imagine you have, you know, a, an interval around which, uh, which uh, are whole numbers. Let's say zero to one, or even, let's say three to four. 
every single step of this algorithm will divide that number, uh, it will move in by half of that range, right? Which means that you have a kind of a quantization problem in that the size, the, the interval is always going to have, it, it, the size of it is always going to be some, um, it's going to be 1 over 2 to the x, where x is some large thing. Um, yeah, so it, 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 Hansen has it correctly. This algorithm will compute, try to compute this forever if you set epsilon equals to, to, equal to 0. And there's also this thing in computers where computers have some smallest number that they can represent. Computers do not present infinite precision when it comes to the representation of numbers. There is a smallest number that you can represent inside of a computer. And basically what happens, it, it's kind of like electron charge from physics. You know electrons have some fixed charge, so all charges in the universe are some multiple of the fixed electron charge. This is roughly the same idea, so if you're yeah, the computer epsilon. So if you're if you have a uh, x intersect which is not exactly some multiple of the computer epsilon, then you'll never hit it. You'll just sort of bounce between two values forever. Um, so this is this qu the point of this question is to understand that there are limits to computation. So. Um, <clears throat> Yes, it's, yeah, yeah, fundamentally what you're doing is you're trying to emulate the functionality of an analog system with a digital system. Digital systems are discrete systems, but analog mathematics, or, you know, continuous mathematics cannot be perfectly expressed in digital electronics. It's, it, you know, we can do reasonably well with it we can come up with approximations that are right, you know, the overwhelming majority of times, you know, sufficiently well for the majority of scientific calculation to be put through computers at this point in time. However, there is, it is important to understand that there are limitations. So, there you go. So let's talk about flowcharts. Algorithms can be formatted uh, formulated textually or as flowcharts. Uh, flowcharts connect instructions and conditions. So, in essence, I'll show you what one of these looks like on a larger scale, just to give you an impression. Um, of what an algorithm can look like, but let's go through what the individual parts of an uh, of algorithmic flowcharts are. If you have just a box with one line going in and one line going out, this is an instruction, which is an a, a statement, a command, or an action. So how long does it take to produce an output for a particular input, uh, to turn a green light on, to continue straight ahead, or con to subtract V from U, or um, yeah, how many resources like memory are needed in this process? These are questions that you can ask yourself about instructions, but the over the point of this is that if you have just a statement, like an assignment statement, which is a thing that you'll have to use quite a lot, this is the symbol for it. You then have conditional statements. For example, if you have con condition B being true, then you follow the yes branch. If you have it being false, then you follow the no branch. These are, um, in, in programming, we have what are called Boolean expressions, which are, we'll, we'll get into them, but essentially there's a way for you to test to see if some number is greater than or equal to 7, etc., etc., can I display the PowerPoint bigger? Um, not without losing the chat. There? 
maybe. Ah, it mucks up the page thing. So, yeah, so, straight through, that's a statement. If it branches, that's a condition. You can also have sequences of instructions. Um, if the boxes are just joined together, then that's a couple of instructions in a row. And if you have these dots which start or end the flowchart, these are optional, but they're sometimes there. Just increase this whole... Uh, no, it, it doesn't affect the width. A and B in these boxes, or S and T, these are just stand-ins for um, some expression or some statement. So S can be, you know, X is equal to X plus 1 or something like that. But yeah, we're, we're going to get into it. So with respect to more advanced control flow concepts, we have a few different types. So in programming, there are essentially two main types of conf control flow concepts that it's necessary for you to get. <clears throat> if you don't understand, if you don't have a working knowledge of these two main categories of constructs, you should probably um, study this specifically. Try hovering mouse over the corner. I mean, I don't know what the... Is it is it really that bad? What does F five do? Yeah, I lose the chat then, but I suppose okay, I'm gonna just not worry about chat for a little bit then. Okay. So you've got these two basic constructs. You have conditional statements and you have loops. Computer languages can get very, very fancy, but because of the idea of uh, Turing machine equivalence, which is, you know, a fancy way of saying all programs can express all other programs, um, ah, I'm probably just confusing you. So, <clears throat> When you write in a particular programming language, it is possible for the program that you write to be expressed in other languages. It's just a matter of, you know, how particularly you have to arrange that program to express what you're expressing in the other one. All programming languages either implement these or implement equivalent constructs to these, but these are the big ones with respect to concepts in programming. So you've got branches. <clears throat> you have some conditional statement. If, it's, if that condition is true, you do something. And if it's false, you do something else. In the case of this middle one, if it's true, you do S. And if it's not true, you do T. If B, then S, else T. <clears throat> the else T part is actually... Um, optional. You don't have to include it. If you do not include something for the program to do uh, in the false case, then it will join back up with program execution after uh, basically this arrow will just dump back out post s. So if b then s, if not b then just continue. 
And then we have the loop. Loops are the more difficult conceptually of the two. So while B do S. So there's some condition. If that, as long as that condition is true, the program will flow into S and then back up and reevaluate the condition. So <clears throat> the loop will continuously jump between executing what's inside of the loop and testing to see if the condition is still true. As soon as the condition is lo no longer true, program, uh, control of the program is released from the loop and continues on to the next part of the program. This is, these are the fundamentals of computing. Between conditions and loops, you can do anything that a computer can do. So, let's see. Hmm. Oh. Oh, yeah, no, the, uh, yeah. No, this isn't part of my desktop. This is like a overlay on, yeah. Sorry, guys. So, <clears throat> so this is, um, this is all true. Why don't we, at this point in time, actually write some, uh, some programs that will do some stuff? That'll be fun, right? So, let me see here. Master teaching. Um, <laughs> so, <clears throat> I'm going to open up a file, a Python file. Here we go. So conditions and loops are all you need for a language to be Turing complete. Um, yes, and it also has to be unsolvable on the halting problem. So <clears throat> the halting problem is, uh, can you determine if the program halts? So some languages, you can look at the language and you can say, okay, this lang this this um, program will terminate, and this one will not. In order for a programming language to be Turing complete, it has to be unsolvable on the halting problem, i.e., you have to not be able to tell while looking at a program whether or not it's going to complete. <clears throat> but yeah, um, so let's say we had x is equal to 3, y is equal to 7, if x is equal to 3, y is equal to 8, print, uh, doing too much, x or y is equal to string convert y. Maybe this will work. I don't know. I've been doing so much C lately that I think maybe my Python is a uh, um, slipping a bit. So, in order to execute, yeah, welcome to Linux indeed. In order to execute a Python file from a bash prompt, um, all you have to do is type python3 and the name of the Python file. There you go. So y is equal to 8. Um, that's because, so, yeah, let's, else y is equal to hello world. So you can see that what the program is doing is it's evaluating. Oh, oh, I didn't save it. It's evaluating what it, it's taking a look at x and it's saying, okay, is x equal to the value specified? In Python, uh, in all, in in most programming languages, one equal sign is assignment. So x becomes one y becomes 7, and double equals means test for equality. Um, yes. So, 
you can see that that is, you know, the outcome, what the value of y is, is dependent on what the value of x is. This is the example of a conditional. Ah, no, you don't have to define types in Python, for those of you who are used to other programming languages. Um, Python is dynamically typed, so any variable can hold anything. You can even drop a string in there, and it won't complain at you. Uh, if true also works, yes. Um, you can, of course, put a Boolean literal into an if, con uh, an if condition. I'm not sure why you would want to, though, because that would just make the if condition always execute one branch and never the others, in which case, why even have it the condition in the, uh, in the first place? <clears throat> uh, yeah, and the other interesting thing about Python is that you don't have to do explicit variable declaration as long as a variable is assigned to before it's used. Um, everything will work. If, for example, I uh, comment out this first instance of x being assigned to, it'll give me a complaint. Yeah, x name x is not defined. So you can't test if x is 3 unless x has been actually assigned somewhere. But uh, other, th yeah, so we're going to get into this, but Python is a... a um, Python is a interpreted rather than a compiled language. So it, what that means is that you have the Python interpreter process that's running, and you're feeding each of these statements into it one at a time. So it can't actually look through your code ahead of time to see where all the syntax errors are. It'll find a syntax error as it hits that line. Hmm. Um... You have to cast, or variables can change to any type. Um, generally speaking, uh, casting is a good idea. Um, sometimes it's not necessary, like going from floats to stray. Uh, sorry, go, going from floats to ints. Generally speaking, you don't have to, but definitely you have to if you expect if you're expecting a. a um, um, if you're expecting a string, like let's uh, let's just for the sake of experimentation, uh, put y back to eight and see how it deals with this implicit concatenation. Will it uh, actually convert that? No. Uh, so y has to be a string because we're using a string operator on it. This is all going to get. For those of you who are getting a bit lost at this point, that's be that's because um. Right now, people who know a little bit of programming are asking a bunch of questions about how Python is different to the programming languages that they're used to. Um, uh, but we're gonna we're gonna cover all of this in depth in the course of this course. Um, yeah, if you're ca if you're converting to or from string, then you have to cast. So this is this is an example of a conditional statement. Let's do an example of a loop. So let's say z is equal to 0, while z is less than 10, z, oops, z plus equals 1, and print t minus, yep, string conversion there, but the boo. Print ha huh. blast off. Oop, I have to fix that. So, oh, I I meant it to be a countdown. There we go. So do we need a debugger to find error in code as Python is an interpreter and gets executed line by line? Um, 
You don't need a debugger. Debuggers can be helpful. Okay. Um, so a string means a string of characters. So this is a string. Anything that's in quotes is a string. This is the um, this is what it's known as in computer speak. So hello world. This is a string. A string is a specific type of data that we will be manipulating in programs. Um, so basically, the computer um, the computer recognizes a difference between um, numerical data and numerica and data that's encoded in characters. There's a difference between the number 13 and the string 13, right? Those are not the same thing. Yeah, so um, we're going to get into it when we talked about data types. But that's, um, yeah. You can think of it as a sentence. I prefer to think of it as characters. But yeah, this so this line as well means z is equal to z minus 1. It's programmer's shorthand. Um, yes, you do need to convert z to a string, otherwise you'll get a comp compiler error. Can you use parentheses to make it more readable? Of course you can. Um, So if one is in a string, it's seen as the word, but if one x equals one, the program recognizes it as a value. Yes. So notice something here. If I make this to, into the string, into the character three, rather than the value, like the numeric value three, if I execute this program again, you will notice that, oh, it's, it's just doing it anyway. Did I save that? There we go. So notice that if I convert this to a string, this equality test will fail. There you go. Um, they are different things. So, so let's talk about what this loop is doing, right? So you'll notice in our output, we've got t minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We have, you know, all of these statements, these five statements. But they are all originating from this one print statement with different values of z. Um, we are using Python 3, because Python 3 is the correct one. Are we going to have to follow PEP 8 guidelines in this course? No, of course not. Don't worry. So, because this print statement is being executed multiple times, the implication is that, like, program flow kind of goes like you execute a statement, when that's finished, you execute the next one, when that's finished, you execute the next one, and you go on down through the program. So with the while loop, when it hits the bottom of the while loop, it doesn't go on to this blast off statement, it goes back up to the top, reevaluates the condition. If the condition is false, then it executes the blast off statement. Otherwise, it continues to execute the print statement, and then Z gets modified again. <clears throat> so, uh, are brackets necessary for Z is for this line here? Let's see. I don't think so, actually. Python usually is pretty good. Nope, they're not necessary. So, what I often do, because I'm used to programming in languages where these extraneous brackets are required, uh, I just tend to include them everywhere. Like, for example, th in right here, these brackets are required. It That's because print is a function and not a specific type of statement. Um, you could just print Z, but I wanted the T minus. <clears throat> So, so the, the purpose of the loop is to be able to execute things repeat in, repeatedly, um, as you can see here, right? So that's, 
anyway, that's that's our, you know, shotgun introduction to loops and conditionals. There we go. So, my goodness. <clears throat> so, let's let's talk some basic instructions then. The basic instructions of flowcharts are those in which the underlying machine has those which the underlying machine has for changing the state of the program. So, you've got assignment. In math speak, we use colon equals, that sort of mathematical notation. You speak that x becomes e. And in Python, we also have multiple assignment. Um, so, if, for example, I wanted to do both of these in one line, this is just kind of a syntactic issue, you can also do it like that. And that will work. Oh, save that. I always forget to save. There you go. So in Python, you can make things a little more compact by putting things on the same line. The lack of semi -cur semicolons and curly braces is unsettling. Yes. Uh, oh my goodness, I have so many questions. Um, is it the white space that determines what's included in the loop? Yes. So that's how Python works. Um, for those of you who don't know what white space is, that's things like the tabs, the tab, this is a tab character actually. You might not know this, but the way that a computer represents where a tab is, there's actually a special character for it. And then there's also the new line. So where you put your tabs and your new lines actually determines the pro program's structure in Python. So white space is important. It's very important to know. Um, although, again, we have a slide on this later. We don't need to use string when we put z is minus equals 1. Uh, no, because we're, sta we're saving... Um, we're saving z as a, as a numeric value. When we convert it to a string here, the conversion isn't permanent. It's not actually affecting the underlying data. All it's doing is applying... So we're, co we're going to get into this idea of functions. But what a function does is you give it an argument, and then it returns a value. In this case, the str function accepts a very wide variety of different types of data, but it always returns a string, what it considers to be the, you know, common sense interpretation of whatever it's been given as a string. So the, the value of z is not actually being affected here, which means that when we subtract 1 from it, we are subtracting from the numerical underlying data itself. Um, so there you go. Yeah, why do the print statements need a plus before string? Um, that is a concatenation operator. So if you want to put something onto another thing and those are both strings, you use plus. Yeah, da, 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 da. Yes, there's no semicolon. Da, da, da. Um, don't use double equals inside of an assignment statement. Line 12, um, oh, uh, was it, I missed, I, uh, so this one, um, this is shorthand for z is equal to z minus 1. So that just means take whatever z is and subtract 1 from it, and then put it back in z. Is it needed to put this here in this statement? Um, if I'm doing it like this, yes. If all I'm doing is printing z, print knows automatically to convert whatever I'm whatever I give it to a string automatically. However, if I want to do something a little more fancy, then I have to um, I have to perform the conversion manually. <clears throat> yeah. So there you go.
question, would this work? Um, T minus and then a comma. I think that works, yeah. Yeah, that works. So, yes, you can work ahead on the class. Um, I, I'll see if we can get the assignments working. How many attempts do you have for the assignments? You have as many attempts as you like. Uh, we will take the most recent submission. It's kind of like Price is Right. Um, close, uh, uh, as close to without going over the submission deadline. Yes, so if you use comma, then you don't have to worry about it's, it. You know, it's slightly less writing. Um, <clears throat> so we're getting bogged down in the detail a little bit. But that's also, I think, useful to a certain... What? Meow? There we go. Can I enlarge the window? I don't think so, but I think I might be able to zoom it in a little bit. Come on, you. Um, settings. View. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. Does it matter if we put the line before or after line 10? Um, yeah, generally speaking, the order things occur in is important. Um, <laughs> everything is greater than Java except Objective-C. Yes. Um, I've never used Objective-C, but I agree. So uh, a, a thing that you will note about programming is that uh, you can write mathematical expressions in them that are very similar to the types of expressions that you'd write in um, relatively straightforward mathematical notation. And we're going to get into this uh, once we get into the next set of slides, but um, my goodness. Oh boy, we are going to have to motor. Um... Control plus, yeah, I tried that. Control plus, 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 plus. No! And nobody suggests deleting system 32. Nobody do that. That's a thing that'll brick your computer. Um, <clears throat> so, this is a... I'm just gonna... I got it. Sometimes chat is good, sometimes it's too distracting. This is a flowchart for an algorithm that selects the median, which is the middle number of three numbers. So we come in first to a condition, x is less than y. If it is, then we check to see if z is less than x. If it is, then we set the me median equal to x. Otherwise, we check to see if z is less than y. If it is, the median becomes z. Otherwise, it becomes y. So this is cool, and we're going to do a program that implements it. So def median, and I know I'm going to get all kinds of more uh, questions about this, but this is how you define a function. If x is less than y, then we do the check to see if z is. If z, z is less than x, then m is equal to x. Else, if z is less than y, m is equal to z. Else, m is equal to y. Else, if z is less than x, m is equal to x, else if z is less than y, m is equal to y, else m is equal to z, and I know I'm going over time, but just give me two seconds. Return m. This is the median function. 
So if I try median on 4, 7, and 19, uh, and I have to actually print the result. Oh my goodness, my C reflexes. There we go. You can see that it has selected 7, which is in fact the middle number, although it doesn't have to be positionally middle as well. It can be the first number, it can be the last la number, it, can, it doesn't matter. So that's, that's how you put all of these conditionals that you see into actual, actual programming code. Um, I'm going to answer whatever is in the chat, and then I think we'll wrap up for today because it is 1022, and it's rude of me to keep you guys for more lot time than, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. So, okay, I'll, uh, anybody who wants to jump out because they've got another class, please feel free. I'm just going to answer a few questions. Um, oh, it seems like someone already has. Yeah, that's true. Yep. Uh, it's not an hour because I didn't, like, I, I started the stream 10 minutes early, right? So that's, I wasn't, like, there. there's 10 minutes at the beginning of the lecture that wasn't actually lecture. So, like, the video is going to be an hour long, but, you know. Um, anyway, yeah. So, okay. Can we have, you guys want uh, to have this code? I suppose that's reasonable. I will upload this file to Avenue, uh, and you can have it. Uh, with respect to desk reference for these flowcharts, I can uh, suggest nothing more simple than just having the slides. Um, is there a more efficient way of doing this? Um, there is always a more efficient way of doing everything in programming. Um, I mean... Yeah, let's see. If I were to do def better median x, y, z, um, max, uh, max is equal to maximum x, y, z, min, and it's a little to the minimum x, y, z, um, return um, or actually you know what sort x y z and then just take whatever the sec that should work as well Did I save it? There we go. Oh. I think I have to do dot sort. There's sometimes you have to do one, sometimes you have to do the other. Still no? Hmm. Well, anyway. There's definitely better ways to do everything. <laughs> yeah. Um... Are we meant to be taking notes for these lectures, or are one are the slides enough? Uh, I mean, hey, dude, uh, you you do you. If you want to take notes of things, then I encourage it. If you think you don't need to, then that's fine too. Uh, switch statements don't exist in Python. Just so you know. Yeah, yeah. You can also just use a median function for sure. <laughs> the tutorials of this course are on Python. Yes, yes, they are. Yes, um, 
if you had to calculate an average in Python, the code would start define average. It's define whatever you want to call the function, but yeah. Is it okay to feel a little stressed out by now, right now, if you've never coded before? Yes, it's okay to feel a little stressed out because um, you've been seeing a lot of stuff going on very rapidly that you don't probably have the, you know, mental context to be able to cogitate. But um, try the assignment once the assignment is up and running. Um, you really kind of just have to get into it. Um, but, yeah, okay, let's see. I have classes during both tutorial times. Well, there are six tutorials, so uh, take a look at where the rest of them are. Um, you can use variables and dictionaries to act as switch statements. Come on, man. Jeez, that's not a switch statement. All right. Well, anyway, uh, I'm going to call it here. Thank you very much for your time and attention, folks. And we shall see you in the next episode.